Hi, this is J.P. Morgan and Lars Lindstrom, and we're here for the show that's called Trends in the Trenches because we haven't figured out another name yet. I don't believe us anymore. I don't believe us either. <laughs> well, I just don't believe that we're going to change it. I'm starting to feel the same way. <laughs> But it takes time. It does. We're, we're both shooting and working and stuff. And there's things that have to be done. And the name has not been a priority on our list. But there's a lot of great things going on in the world of video and photography. So mm. let's talk about them. So can I start off with a, an obscure one? Sure. <laughs> Some guy has a camera he set up that takes a 1,000 year exposure. Oh. It takes 1,000 years what? to get an exposure. <laughs> and I thought the comments <laughs> when he posted it were great. One guy goes, Oh crap, I left the lens cap on. <laughs> and then the guy goes, and you'll just be a white blur. Yes. And it took a thousand years. Yes. <laughs> he, so he I guess he's done this before. What's his name? I gotta look up his name here. He's done it before. He for did a thousand he did. years. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> but he he uh, did a hundred hundred year cameras at uh in Germany, put like several hundred year cameras up all over okay. Berlin. Okay. And so, Jonathan Keats. Okay. He wants to set a world record in photography that won't, he won't live long enough to see, nor will his children, or his children, or his children, 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 his children. <laughs> After like 150 years, some janitor guy will come along and go, What is this? And he'll get tossed Stupid out. Thing. <laughs> what is this? It doesn't function anymore. What is it? What kind of a camera is this? He'll be shaking it and looking at it. <laughs> Going, what is this That's all about? Right. <laughs> it looks like a doorbell. <laughs> really? Yeah. So like explain this. Explain what pinhole. is the camera? Pinhole camera? It's a pinhole camera, and he has basically a paint process where you, it's basically like fading paint in your house. Okay. That it's that faded paint is looking at a latent image, it's looking at an image through a pinhole, and it's going to take a thousand years to fade the paint into. And he says, well, the buildings that go away will be ghosts there. Of, it's going to be an old ghost. It's going to it be. It is going to be. Well, I mean, it's so, an interesting concept. Jonathan Keats, you know what? I, I think it's amazing. Uh, good luck on that. I uh, hope it works out We're well. We're proud of you, it. buddy. We are. Hang We're in proud there. of you. So, try a two minute exposure. Yeah. You'll get to see something in your life. It's Even like, of the stars. It's a whole different experience. You it's know? still pretty. It's like, oh, that's my images. <laughs> so, that's crap. I'm going to shoot something else. <laughs> so, all right, there's a go, Jonathan. <laughs> Hey, and but I think this is exciting. The FAA has all their new rules for drones. I don't know these. That, you don't know these? No. They are really interesting. This is kind of everyone kind of applauded this on several levels because it's it's not too restrictive. It leaves the door open, but there are some things in here that are pretty tough. One right. is can't weigh more than fifty five pounds. All right. So can you get a, a red Epic up on a sure can under fifty five pounds? Yeah, okay. It's as probably, long as you can do that, you're probably, good. You're probably looking at about 25, 30 okay. pounds that that weight. Line of sight. I was talking okay. to a, a copter <laughs> operator just uh, this last week. He's going, you know what? It's just a freaky experience when you lose them. And he said, <laughs> yes. He's, it's just, he's, I know it's flying, but I don't know where it's at. Oh, man. You know, and so it has to be line of sight. And you can't use anything <clears throat> other than corrective lenses. You can't be using binoculars. That's not line oh. of sight. Yeah, that's so okay. It that has to be, sense. <laughs> but they make that distinction in there to make sure that you're not going to. Uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, we've got a, a telescope and I can see it. Um, it also says that you cannot fly them over people. What? Yep. Let me read it exactly what it says here. It says daylight only, maximum airspeed 100 miles per hour. I think we can handle that. I think somehow that'll That's work. That's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like maximum altitude 500. Go ahead. I, it's just funny to me. It's just like, okay, well, you, can fly, you can't fly more than 100 miles an hour. And you're like, okay. Uh, Great, hey, that's great. We're doing good. And they're like, and you can't fly it over people. And it's like, what? That, that's the whole point of a drone. <laughs> it's like, you just ruined it all. The day I'd only think kind of might be, I mean, what's, okay, so official Officially sunrise. sunrise to official sunset. Ah, that just kills like the, the best golden time. hour. The golden hour is yeah. in there, man. It's like you're right at the end of it. You know, who's going to break that? Everyone who flies one. Every yeah. single person. <laughs> yeah. I have. I mean, that's like, that's the only time I want to get out and fly is yeah. just to get that, like, Absolutely. purple golden hue at the, the yeah. horizon so yeah. they propose a micro uas option that would allow operations in class g airspace over people not involved in the operation provided the operator certifies he or she has the requisite aeronautical knowledge to perform the operation boring so basically <laughs> you get a class g so basically you can get uh, a some kind of a license that allows no, you that shows that you are license. 
qualified. Yeah. And so the, a, after that, can you then fly over people? Yes, that's okay. what it's saying. Okay. That's All what right. it's saying. Okay. So it looks like that maybe you know we're gonna get a bunch of comments going. You idiots don't know what you're talking about. And you know what? You're probably right. They're probably yeah. you, you're, you're onto something. You here. really are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to talk about the Alexa Mini. I can't help it anymore. <laughs> can I just can I just bring it up? Alexa Mini. That's like a, that's like a BMW Mini. <laughs> it is. Hey, a smart car. Ah, <laughs> it's the Alexa smart it car. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just cool. All right. So they've got this camera down to five pounds, about right. That's pretty amazing. So from twenty pounds to five pounds with the same sensor and the same recording capabilities. So they are, they're both, they have two models apparently coming out and, and they're still really like kind of quiet about the price. So I don't know the price yet, but it's going to be less expensive than a general, uh, regular Alexa. And I've heard somewhere that it, it's going to be less expensive than your high-end Amira too, which, mm. which is very hopeful. I'm, I'm hopeful of that. But there's two things. Uh, you've got a, they both come standard with a 4.3 sensor. So what does that mean? It means that you can... You can shoot, you can crop the tops of the, and bottoms of the sensor to shoot a 16 by 9 image, or you can put anamorphic lenses on and use the full coverage of your 4.3 sensor. So the 4.3 is really built for, let's, if you want to get into anamorphic lenses, you can get that beautiful landscape. But, so they have two, two models of the camera. They both come with a 4.3 sensor, but one will only shoot 16.9. It's cheaper. Oh, okay. So they, they lock that out because there's a lot of people that never use anamorphic lenses. Yeah. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't do a couple other things. I don't, it do, won't do uh, internal RAW. It just records to the ProRes um, onto CF 2.0 cards, mm. or um, I think you can do S by S cards as well as an option, or uh, their their own big bigger drives. Yeah. But um, but anyway, it's just to me, it just seems like a really cool. They're they're trying to get into the underwater housing or drones or so yeah, is that the know, market that's the market or the three axis stabilizer even i mean well that's a big camera that, well i mean you've got well i don't, I don't mean as in big that's an expensive camera an expensive big, camera but i think they're really trying to push more consumer right now i mean not i mean this is this isn't so consumer, what's the, so what do like, you think the price is going to be what's your guess Forty-five thousand. yeah <laughs> that's not consumer that's not consumer what i mean is it's not. It's no longer a rental. They're trying. Oh, they're trying okay. to say but to the professional it. DP, this is a camera that you purchase. It's an investment. Yeah. And rather than come, every other Alexa before is mostly rental. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like if you want to shoot Alexa, you go through a rental house. Yeah. Um, but everybody owns a Red. You know, mm -hmm. and and there's a lot of people that own the Red Epic, or the Red Dragon, and that's a thirty thousand dollar camera. So if you can if you can get that Alexa image quality, which is, I mean, as we mentioned right before we started the show, the last four uh, Academy Award um, Oscars in cinematography had been shot on the Alexa. Well, and it was like 10 of the 12 or something of the uh, films that were up for best, best picture Best picture were all shot on the Alexa. I mean, it's... I mean, it's so it's a camera of choice right it's now the in, camera the, in, choice. The, in the film world, there's no doubt. And so to have that same camera of choice look in a small, compact... So I Would I'm, you buy one? Well, I have an Alexa. And I, and I like it. I mean, see, the thing is, I, the, I love the Alexa because it's, it's really built. You can do handheld, or you can go on tripod, and it's, and it's a very comfortable fit, more so than the Epic. I, I hate the Epic because of it's, you know, you're, you're right here, and you're, when you're doing handheld on it, it's nearly impossible. Um, I'm shooting this feature film right now in Lake Havasu, and we have a jib that I can't put a 25-pound camera on the front of because it's just too heavy. But if I had, I could, I could do the Red Dragon or I could do the Alexa Mini. I could, and it would support just fine. So there's like, there's, there's things where you're getting- like, So what could you not do with the Alexa Mini that the Alexa can do? Well, it has, it, I mean, right now it's just a very, it's, it's just kind of a box. It's called, they're calling it the cube. Yeah. And uh, so it doesn't have a lot of the output or uh, power connectivity that the Alexa has, the Alexa Classic or the Alexa XT. So, um, so that's, that's a limitation is that you don't have as, as much ability to, to go out to different options or have different power connected. and So I don't know, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see, but it does do 200 frames a second internal, mm. which, is, which is- 1080p? Uh, no, I think, uh, I think they're, it's higher now. Is it higher? I don't know the exact- For 200 frames? Yeah, yeah. I don't know the exact um, pixel count yet, 
but uh, and that of the day they're they're so you kind of quiet right now on 4k yeah. or no 4k if you were a small indie dp and you know this is a camera you would you shoot a whole feature with this camera sure i mean it's the alexa look it's the Alexa look. Everybody, I mean, there's tons of people shooting features on. You're gonna the figure reds. out how to mount it and how to fly it and how to. You're, oh yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna make all that stuff happen. If it's the same weight as a Red Epic, which it is, mm -hmm. I mean that's like you can put it on a Ronin or a, or a uh, uh, Movi. Movi, yeah. And and That'd shoot a whole fabulous. bunch of fun stuff with it. Yeah, with That'd the Alexa fabulous. look. Good night. It's just, it's fantastic, man. So I think it's interesting to note that there's a kind of a Chinese knockoff of the GoPro called the Yi e Action Camera. <laughs> you gotta love a Yi e Action Action Camera. I want one. Just so same, I can say it. Same specs as the entry level GoPro, which is I think the Go entry level is like 139, which yeah. something like that. So same this, specs as that, and, and better. There's a couple okay, of the so couple of specs that are better. Compete with their high end camera. No, not yet. Ah, okay. Not well, yet. that'll come. Yeah, yeah, it will. that'll come. Yeah. But for $64. $64. It'll be interesting to see how that develops. Well, GoPro's a billion, multi-billion dollar company, you know. It's yeah. probably a good time yeah. for a little competition. Yeah. You know? And not and not like the Sony competition. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. It's yeah. like, hey, hey guys, here's a camera a few months later that has the same specs and it's the same price. <laughs> Who's Hang gonna on. buy that? Nobody. Nobody. They didn't build a brand. Nope. All right, well, Sony announced a, a series of primes uh, that are coming out. There's several of them here that are great. They have a Sony uh, 35 millimeter, 1.4. I'm very excited about that one. Yep. It has anything, I mean, they've, they've got the Zeiss logo on the sides of all these lenses. So if they have anything to do with it, because I love the, the 35 1.4 that Zeiss makes, it's all manual focus, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one compares. Yep. Well, they have a 90 millimeter 2.8 uh, macro, kind of the fir their first foray into macro. 24 240 it's a 3563 lens hmm. you know that's really kind of uh, i don't know i guess sport kind of things yeah i mean that's more of that world um it's an interesting range 24 to 240 for a full kind of frame a, camera it's yeah it kind of does everything yeah and they have the uh 28 millimeter two it's fun which it's fun interesting lens. they've got these adapters that go on it's an ultra wide uh 16 millimeter you know and they also have a 21 millimeter so there's these Lenses you screw onto the end of your lens to give you those. You know, I always, I always <laughs> those things make me nervous. They always make me nervous too. You know, because like when the when a few years ago when Canon had all their their kind of shoulder cameras, the video cameras, they did that too, where they would like sell you like a twenty time optical lens, mm -hmm. and then they had a like a um, what do you call it, wide angle adapter, fisheye yeah. lens to put on the front. Those always make me a little bit nervous, but yeah, could be great. But you're saying you feel <laughs> like in in video mode that when you use the the lenses, like the 2470, it just doesn't focus very on well. On my on my A7S, I bought the the Sony 2470F4, right? And when I take the focus into manual mode, I feel like it's still an electronic focus. So when I go to infinity and then try to rack to something in the foreground, I feel like there's a delay. And so I'm missing my marks and it's, I mean, it's all over the place and it's so frustrating, you know, cause it's not, it has not the same feel. It's definitely not as intuitive as an actual manual focus lens where it's just, you are actually- You just, you watch the focus come towards well, you. No, and you, you feel it, you know, yeah. it's like, and there's no markings on the lens. Yeah. So you can't see, oh, I, I should be at seven and a half feet. You know, there's no, there's nothing. There's no, even like the Canon lenses have that, markings. That doesn't work for a video. It just doesn't work, work for video. So I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in that 24. I mean, it's sharp. Yeah. So when I go into photo mode and I'm taking my photos or if I'm in video mode and I get focus confirmation, it's great. It's, it's sharp. It's lovely, handy walk around lens. Yeah. But for video, I can't, I just can't use it anymore. I'll buy it from you for 500 bucks. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Let's start a bidding war online. So put in the Lars's comments. Lens. Yeah. <laughs> Lars's lens. How much will you pay for Lars's 2470 new Sony lens? I saw this at the WPPI. I got back. Oh, did you? I just, uh, I don't know why I'm so in love with this, but I am. It's American Bison leather camera bag from this company called Hold Fast. It's just, uh, they are so cool. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're so cool. You need to get one. <laughs> I do need to get one. You need to get one and, and, and just show me why they're so cool. <laughs> it's a camera bag that looks like the old carpet baggers Western leather bag. It is so cool. With the cowboy hat, Lars, you'd look great with one of those. I'm sure I would. That's, that's going to be my wedding get up from now on. There you go. Cowboy hat. 
And they've got these suspenders. No, they come with suspenders. <laughs> no, 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 the suspenders are camera straps. So you have a camera on each side. Oh, Looks like a pair of leather suspenders. Hey, people were buying these things like crazy at WPPI. At Absolutely, it was That's one of the busiest awesome. booths there. That's it's just so cool. Great. It's cool in a hipster plus 100 years older <laughs> sort of way. <laughs> if you lived in 1915 <laughs> more like 1880 <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no i think yeah. i think they're really cool i'm excited to get my hands on one and uh anyway i think this lindsay adero which is adario. a adario is a feature film that spielberg is going to do with uh, jennifer lawrence lindsay adario was one of the photojournalists that was uh, captured in libya <laughs> and held there captive and uh finally was released and and not harmed fortunately other than it was a pretty traumatic experience when you read about what happened. She has a book out that's called, and it's, uh, she has a book out that's really fascinating to me because she talks about her life as a photojournalist and also her life as a mother. Huh. So she's a photojournalist who's in both those worlds. Okay, so uh, it's really interesting. The book is called The Photographer's Life of Love and War. So an interesting book to look at. And interesting movie. It should be a great movie if you love photography and you love Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. Which, you know. And Jennifer Lawrence. And Jennifer Lawrence. How could you go wrong with that? That uh, you can't. You know, it's like my dad. This is a funny side story, but my right. dad right. Had, had this big activist thing he did back in the '60s, and uh, Robert Redford is going to play him in a movie. And uh, my dad used to always think, "Yeah, he's almost as good looking as I am." <laughs> <laughs> Your dad is such a character. He is man. such a character. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Speaking of books, I think this is a really interesting book called *The Hate*. Okay. It's the photography of Jim Marshall, okay. who was a major rock and roll shooter all through that whole 60s, 70s, just passed away very recently. And it's just a compilation of his work. There's some iconic images in yeah. this book that are just absolutely fabulous. So if you're into rock and roll, you're into photography, shot most of this on an old Leica. You know, yeah, so just, it's that just kind of street before we started the show, we were flipping through some of the images and it's just like you don't even realize, I mean, all like album covers and those iconic images of of uh, the best bands best from bands. the 60s and 70s, yep. and this guy was there shooting them. The man who really followed them around, you know? I mean, just fabulous stuff. Just fabulous work in this wow. book, so. I mean, it's worth it's worth looking into. If you're into, into books, and uh, photo books are something I'm kind of or, into. Or so. if you need a, uh, a coffee table placeholder. There you go. And uh, want your friends to think that you're cool. Yeah, this very is, cool. This is the book for you, it's about 49 bucks. Red's kind of somewhat announced a new camera called the Red Weapon. Red Weapon? This is their new <laughs> camera. Next one will be the Red Army. Uh, exactly. <laughs> the Red Universe. The Red, we're the best. <laughs> we're trying to be the best. We, we were the best for about three minutes. I know. And it's like, I, I, don't, I don't dislike Red. I just, I feel like, you know, like if you're going to announce a camera, announce a camera. You know what I mean? But they've kind of, they've said like, oh, it'll probably be better in low light. And it might have better dynamic range. And it might be an inch smaller than the Red Epic. And you're going... Oh, okay, but, but can we see it? So why, no, 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 no. why do people make those announcements? Are they trying to see what the market says about it, get some no, feedback. No, I don't know. I, that's, this is this is kind of what Red's known for. They they do these little like hints to try to keep people's interest, and then NAB they'll release this thing. And but Ari Ari did that the opposite, which is very interesting to me. I, I feel like it's getting like that more and more with companies where they'll a month or two before NAB they'll just say, here it is, come check it out at the trade show. And so just maybe people not do. trying to do the big reveal at the trade right. show. Right, right. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So this ends our first segment, news and reviews. But if you go to thuslandlands.com, you can see all four of our segments stitched together. It'll be up at the first of the month. The other segments will come out slowly on YouTube. So check it out on thuslandlands.com. And we also have... The podcast. The podcast. The Slanted Lens podcast. So go to your podcast app on your iPhone or Android, I guess. There's... Probably the same thing there. I don't have an Android. But I, you know, who does? And uh, download it or subscribe. Trench from the trenches. Listen to it in your car on your way to work. That's what I do. 